Hello and welcome to How Do I? The first in our series of Moodle helps that's going to explain the various functions within Moodle. Today we're going to start with the setup and use of Moodle's gradebook. Opening up the gradebook. Setting it up. Looking at some of the various reports or views of the gradebook. Creating gradable items and how to go ahead and enter or modify grades. We'll be using the Moodle 2.4 format. Okay, let's go ahead and get started and take a look at our gradebook. Once we've signed in, we end up at the home page here, and in order for us to get into the gradebook, we've got to drop down into our course. All of the menus within Moodle are context sensitive, meaning the options that you have in, say, the settings bar change as you move from page to page. So we'll go ahead and pick up our course, and now we've landed at the front page of the course, and we're going to go ahead and scroll down here under Settings to Grades, and now we're in the gradebook. This is the default view you will see when you first come into the gradebook. It shows you the roster that you currently have of the students, along with all the gradable items within the course. So up here we have the pull-down report. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. It gives us the various views of the gradebook. We'll examine some of those in just a few minutes along with the simple and full view of the items that we're grading. There are also ways to look at the scales and the outcomes, changing letter grades, importing and exporting within the document itself, and some of the course settings. Let's go ahead and take a look at the course settings. All right, now you see here that we have a number of defaults. You can leave pretty much all of those alone. They'll change what's going on. Most of the defaults are very helpful to you. Nothing really major that you have to worry about, but it's nice to know they're there. For instance, being able to show feedback, showing grades, showing percentages. So we'll cancel a lot of that. We'll also then take a look at the grader report. And in terms of options, what we can change there. Again, most of these you can leave at the default in terms of whether or not they're showing calculations in some of the locks. However, one thing that's very important is to take a look at this. The default is no, but you do want to set this to yes, because if you set it to yes, it allows you to make quick comments in the gradebook without having to jump out and into the student's work and then back into the gradebook. So make sure that's at yes, and then go ahead and save changes. Now this is the grader report. It shows me all of the students within the class. If I go to the user report, this shows me the gradable items, and then I can pick any student I want to. So I'll pick Monkey Boy here. And now we can see that the only grade Monkey Boy has gotten so far is for the quiz, and he didn't do too well on that. All right, let's go back to the grader report. Now if we just wanted to look at the items that are gradable, we can go to the simple view, and there are some defaults here that will get us in trouble. The first one is right here. The system will default to the simple weighted mean of grades. Most of the time we're not going to use this. Most grade books that I've seen at least use the sum of the grades. We don't do a lot of weighting. If you wish to do weighting, feel free. However, I find that tends to confuse students, where if it's a simple sum of grades, they'll normally understand how things work in the grade book. Now, unfortunately here, I have an extra credit point that I didn't want to have here. That was a mistake, so I'm going to click this off and save the changes. Now, notice right now we're at 36 points for maximum grades. Now that I've saved it, the maximum grades have changed to 48 because the 12 points are no longer extra credit. You do want to check and make sure that all that is done properly. For each of the gradable items within the gradebook, you have a number of options over here as icons. You can change the settings. This will throw you back to whatever the gradable item is, so you can change it the same way you can build them from the home page or front page. You can move these items up and down in the gradebook, try to make it a little simpler for students to understand. We'll show you that in a few minutes. You can hide or reveal the various items in the gradebook, and if you're done with them, you can lock them so you don't accidentally change the grades later on. All right, we have saved our total, so we should be okay with that. Let's go back then to the grader report. And if we scroll over, we notice we've got course totals on all of the gradable items here. Now let's take a look at what the full view has for us. Now in the full view, we have more options. You see all the gradable items. You notice the sum of the grades has been selected now automatically. 
There are options we're not going to discuss here, such as dropping the lowest grade. If at any time you have a question inside a grade book, or in fact anywhere in Moodle, just hover over these gray question marks. And when you click on that, it'll pop up a little box and give you information about whatever it is that you have a question on. Another great option, if you're not getting an answer from these quick help screens, is to scroll down at the very bottom of the page. There's always this link to Moodle Docs for the page. Again, it's context sensitive. So if you had a question about the full view in the gradebook, clicking on that would take you to Moodle.org, where you'd be able to see detailed information on this particular page within Moodle. Our maximum grades are how much the students can get from each of these activities. The multiplier here, this is if you wanted to make something worth twice as many points as typically given or whatever. I normally leave those alone. Same with the offset. This is if you're going to change a given number so that we add an extra point back, whatever it may be. And the same controls on this side. I'm not going to talk about outcomes in this particular class. We'll have a class on outcomes later on. Categories are ways to lump various gradable items together. And honestly, I don't use it because, once again, to me, the gradebook should be simple, simple enough that the students can understand it. And the more complex we make it, the more layers we add to it, the less chance you're going to really understand it. So I'm not going to discuss categories, and I don't suggest you use them until you get very familiar with the basics of how to use the gradebook here. But I do want to try to use this middle button, and I want to add a gradable item. Let's say, for instance, that my students have been coming a little bit late. Not late enough that I have to mark them absent, but a little bit late. And I want to encourage them to show up on time. Well, one of the tricks is that if I notice on a given day when I walk in the classroom that only, oh, say, three or four of the students out of the 10 or 12 are actually there on time and in their seats, I may offer an extra credit point for being on time. Well, in order to record that inside the gradebook, I have to come in and add a grade item. So let me click on that, and we'll call this on time credit. And we'll use the value. There's no real scale associated with it. I'm only going to give them a point, not 100 points. And I'll save the changes. Now, if you notice, I have an on time credit for one point. However, that's increased the number of grade points available in the class. I don't want to use it as a grade item. I want to make it extra credit. So I'm going to click on the extra credit box and save changes. And there we go. Now I'm back down to my 48 points for the course, but I do have one extra credit point. Let's go back then to the grade report. And if I scroll over, now by the way, the easiest way to scroll is just to put your cursor somewhere in the middle of the grade book and use your arrow keys. And you notice that I have the on-time credit. However, I've also lost the student names, so which makes it kind of difficult as I get more and more items in my gradebook to see what particular student I'm giving a grade to. Luckily, as you see with these yellow boxes, when I hover over a grade, I can see which student I'm giving a grade to. When we added in the click box saying to give the quick feedback, that's what these dashed boxes are. So let's say that I have... Mr. Bear here, and I'm giving him credit for being on time. Oh, let's just say 7 to 13. I go ahead and keep the date in there so I can remember who was what. And it looks like Pink Piggy was there on time. And oh, why not? Tommy Turtle was there on time. So that's my three students that actually came in or given extra credit for being on time like they're supposed to be. Here is the first mistake that most new instructors make. They assume they're done, they've added in all the points, and they move off to another page. Don't make that mistake. Scroll down. Anytime you make a change in a gradebook, you need to click on the Update button. If you don't click on the Update button, as soon as you move to another page, all the hard work you just put in disappears. So let me turn the editing off. Now let's take a look at the gradebook. Notice I have the three extra credit points here. The boxes for feedback disappear, but you notice as I hover over these, the comments that I made, that date, show up inside the feedback box, which is very helpful. All right, so let's push it back over here. Now let's say I wanted to go back to the home page. I can use the breadcrumb trail up here. I'm in the grader reports, got there from grade administration. Let me go back then to the front page of the course. Now remember, I added a gradable item. But if I look at the front page, nowhere do you see that gradable item. When I put gradable items into the front page, they will update the gradebook, but not vice versa. Now, if I want to add gradable items to the front page, 
I need to turn editing on. Now notice I had editing on in the gradebook. When I come to the front page, it can be on or off. Each page is independent. So I'm going to turn the editing on so I can add things. And here's week one. If you notice, there's nothing in week one at this point in time. And I'm going to hit the gray plus sign in order to add an item to this week. Now there's two terms you need to be familiar with in Moodle if you're not already. One is activity and the other is resource. A resource is an item that you can share with students. It's not gradable. It's just a piece of information. It can be a PDF or a video they're going to view in YouTube or it could be a, a set of activities they do that aren't actually graded. On the other hand, any activity is potentially a graded activity. Now they're both in the same link so I'm just going to hit the gray plus sign and notice in the pop-up I have a number of options. If I use the scroll bar here in the middle, I can shift from activities down to the resources. Now with the resources, since it doesn't involve the gradebook, it doesn't really interest me at this time, so I'm going to slide it back up. Sliding it back up, there we go. And let's say I want to add, oh, how about a quiz? Now notice when I click on the quiz, or any of these other options, it gives me, on this side, information about that particular activity. So for a quiz, it's telling me that it allows me to create quizzes comprised of questions of various types, and I can let them take it multiple times, on and on and on. And again, additional help, if I want it, is available. But I've clicked on quiz, so I tell it to add it, and it's going to add it to whatever week had the gray plus sign that I clicked. Now anything you see in Moodle that is red with a red asterisk is a required field. So here, let me just go ahead and call this one, oh, how about Kitty Pretest. And I'm going to put in a description. This box is pretty important because if you click it, whatever you put in the text box up here will appear on the front page. If you don't click it the way it is now, only the name will appear on the front page. So it depends on how much information you want to share. And this is a click box you can turn off and on. Just for the sake of argument, let me go ahead and turn it on. I want the students to be able to see what's going on there. Now there's not much we have to change at this point. If we wanted to, we could change the dates that it's open. But we're going to cover all these options in our class on quizzes. So I'm not going to do much for you right now. Just scrolling down through it so you can see all the wonderful possibilities. And then I'm going to save and return to course. Now notice the kitty pretest has shown up already. Now we haven't selected any questions for it. Again, that'll be in the quiz class. But at least it's there and we can see it. And notice its description is right there where it's supposed to be. Let's go ahead and add one more assignment. What do you say? So again, the gray plus sign. This time, something simple. Uh, we want to do an assignment. Mm. That should be fine. We'll just have the assignment itself. Now notice this time I have two different required fields. If I don't fill on either one of these two required fields, Moodle is going to error on me and throw me back in this page. I won't be able to save it. So let's just call this one, oh, how about make it a writing assignment. And again, a description. Pop it in there. This time I'm not going to click the box. Especially on a writing assignment, it may be that the actual description is so long, I don't want it cluttering up my front page. So I'm just going to leave this alone so they understand there's an assignment, but they have to click on it to see the description. And anytime they click on a given assignment, that's exactly what will happen. The page will expand. They'll see the stuff. All right, we're not going to do much here. Again, we will have a class on assignments. Notice all sorts of opportunities to change things. Uh, I do want to change the grade, though. 100 points is too much, I think. Let us turn it to 14. And we'll leave it as simple direct graded. Again, I don't like to use grade category, so I'll leave that alone. And we'll save and return to course. Now, on the front page, notice we do have two different gradable items now. And they're indicated in terms of their type by the icon. So this is a quiz and this is an essay. They have to turn in a paper or hand in a paper. I'm going to turn off the editing so you can see what the students would see it like. There you go. So there's a very simple pretest and then the essay itself. Let's go ahead then and go back to grades. Okay, now we added two gradable items. I don't see them though. So we have to scroll and scroll and scroll. Oh, there they are. Notice the two new items, even though they're in week one, because they're newer, 
got tagged in the very end of the grader report. And that might be confusing for some students. Why is it that the week two and week three gradable items are ahead of the week one? We can fix that very, very simply. We just go back, go to Simple View. If you ever have to move items, Simple View is the easiest way to do this. And the pretest and the My Favorite Kitty essay, both of these should be in week one. So I'm going to come across here, use the Move button, and once I click it, it's going to give me the opportunity to drop it in any of these boxes. So I'm going to drop it right up here, and I want to move the essay right below it. Now notice something. Not only has the course total increased because we added in the new points, but when I click on the Move button, sometimes you get lost if you have a lot of gradable items. When it shifts to the Move window, it tells you which item you're trying to move, so you don't get confused. So let's drop that in right below the Kitty Pre-Quiz, Pre-Test. All right, now I have the Week 1 items first, and then the Week 2 items, and the Week 3 items. Not bad getting it just the way I want to. So once again, I'm going to save my changes and let's go back to the grader report. Now, a few other things I wanted to point out. Any item that has a blue title is linkable, so you can go back and change or look at what you've given the students to do. Items that are gray in terms of the icon and black in, in the text, these are manual items. The only way you're going to be able to grade these is by turning on the editing and then going ahead and manually putting in the gradable items. And that should make sense because remember we put that in as a manual item. This highlighted box tells me that there are some comments that I've already made or there's a student paper ready to be graded in there. Things like the quiz have these magnifying glasses, which allows me to click on it to drill down and actually take a look at what the student did on a particular quiz. Very helpful, nice to know, and then I have to go back. And I cheat and I use the back button. Notice there is no magnifying glass for essays. I can't do that with essays, only with quizzes. If I wanted to see what's going on in an essay, I click on the essay itself, on the header, and it tells me what's going on. Right now, I have 10 participants. Only one has submitted anything, and I already graded that one. So I want to view or grade all the submissions. Now notice here that Monkey Boy has submitted something. I gave him six points on it, and I can go ahead and edit my comments if I wanted to by updating the grade or blocking his submission or granting an extension, whichever I feel like doing. I modified it back on Monday. If I click on the pen in the box, it allows me to change the grade that I gave him, and I can also take a look at his particular submission. So with my software here, it just saved it. Opens up Word. There it is. And I close it back up again. Now I can continue to move through student by student, looking at each submission as I work down the gradebook. Or I can just go ahead and save and show the next one, which is better than going just next, because next will wipe out whatever I've changed. Or I'm just going to cancel in this case. All right. We go back to view the gradebook. Now I'm back at the grader view. Let's say I wanted to add some more information in Monkey Boy. So I go ahead and click on the editing. And I've decided that I want to say something to him about his grade. If you remember, the grade was just six. Now, when this particular assignment was set up, it wasn't set up with a feedback option. That's one of the things you will learn in the assignments course is how to actually add in comments directly to the gradebook as you're grading. We didn't do that, but we have a failsafe, and that is because we let the quick editing appear in the gradebook, I can tell him things like, okay, look, minimal effort expended. Need, whoops, learn to spell. Need, still learn to spell. Now notice when I misspelled, it actually told me that by underlining it in red. So that's, you have to kind of keep an eye on it because it's not a big window. Need to work on your presentation, period. Now, there's his six points. The problem is, if I don't hit the update button, it disappears. If I move off this page, so I've got to hit update. Now I can still see the grade, and I can see when I fly over it that the comments are there. When I turn off the editing, I still see my comments exist, so I know everything is okay. If I wanted to see what, um, well, let's say Tommy Turtle's doing, I can click on the grade book here for Tommy, and it gives me all of his grades. In this case, other than being on time, Tommy has not been a very productive student. While I'm in the user report mode, I can jump to any other student I want to, or I can go ahead and look at all 10 students. Now notice, it's giving me the same information that's in the grade view, 
but it's doing it on a student by student basis. So I could actually cut these up if I wanted to print them and give a copy to each of the students, including the feedback I gave them or the date for their extra credit. Let's go back to the grader report. Let's say I want to take a look at the grades at home or I want to deal with them and see something statistical. What kind of variance is there in my grades overall? Well, I don't have to do it in Moodle. I can click on the pull down and export to an Excel spreadsheet. And I don't have to export the entire grade book if I don't want to. Let's say there's one particular quiz I'm not real happy with. So I can click on the Excel grade book and I can either include or not include the feedback that's in the grade book. I'm going to look at the first 10 rows or I can look at as many as I wish. I can even change the number of decimal points and what it's going to be sent to my Excel spreadsheet. And here you see by default it selects every single item to pass on to the Excel spreadsheet. But let's say I just am interested in this one quiz. So I can turn everything else off. I may want to leave the course total. I may not. And I go ahead and submit it. And this is the information that's going to be sent to my Excel spreadsheet if I click on download. Notice it only gives me just this one quiz. These fields you're kind of stuck with. You can't get rid of them easily. So the easiest thing to do is pull them into Excel and then delete the columns at that point. But let's say that now I'm done with all of my gradebook. How do I get back in the course? Well, I go back up into the breadcrumbs and I click on the front page here. One other thing to keep in mind is the recent activity area will tell you what's going on. What kind of updates were made? We added a quiz and we added an assignment. This helps you keep track of what's going on. It'll also tell you when people have turned things in, which also helps. All right. One last time, I want to show you how you get to the gradebook and then how you get to help. You're on the front page of your course. Go into Settings, Grades, click on Grades. Now you get this far and you totally forget everything we've talked about so far. All you have to do is scroll down and click on the Moodle Docs. And you're immediately brought to Moodle.org. It tells you everything you ever wanted to know about the gradebook. You can drill from here into more and more detail about the various capabilities. There's even videos explaining how to do this. Very, very helpful and a wonderful resource for you to use. Also gives you other options you can look at if there's something specific you're interested in over on this side. That's it. I think we've covered everything you need to know to get started in the gradebook. If you have any questions, as always, we are happy to help in anything you need to uh, discuss or to fix within Moodle. So please give us a call. We appreciate your time and effort, and you have a wonderful day. Thank you much.